As the world marks the second anniversary of the Ukraine crisis, the West continues to support Ukraine with military weapons and aid, despite there being no clear sign of victory against Russia. At the just-concluded Munich Security Conference, which gathered politicians from across the Atlantic, one major topic was Ukraine, in particular, the stalled U.S. military aid. Another topic was the ceding on military spending for European countries. U.S. politicians at the conference have tried to sound optimistic that the Ukraine aid package will ultimately be approved. The Europeans are also focusing on the NATO budget. 11 out of 31 NATO countries did so in 2023, and 18 will spend more than the required 2% of GDP on defense in 2024. The thinking appears to be that if enough money is spent on weapons provided to the Ukrainians, it will be enough to help Ukraine win on the battlefield. There were attempts at peace negotiations early in the conflict, but as the battle has raged on, there have been no more talks of peace from either side. As the past two years have shown, more weapons to Ukraine have not led to a ceasefire or peace, though they have certainly helped Ukraine defend itself. But how long can such a military conflict continue? Few in the West seem sure of a Ukraine victory, even if the U.S. Congress approves the $60 billion military aid package. And even if there is a victory, few are certain what that would look like. With the Russian forces capturing Avdivka, the West is doubtful that more military support will work. What is currently absent is a rational and objective discussion of what led to the Ukraine crisis, and therefore what lessons can be learned. The consensus in the West remains that Russia is to blame, and this explains all the ills that the Europeans face today. Though the Ukraine conflict is a complicated matter, few can deny that the eastward expansion of the world's most powerful military organization, NATO, did cause concern for the Russians. Russia considers NATO as not a friendly presence, and not only the Russians think so, but the entire global south largely agrees. The perception here is that, based on the Western press and remarks by politicians, the West has done no wrong, it's all Russia's fault. Somehow, they argue, Russia has no and doesn't need to have national security concerns, as it's a powerful country by itself. If this is true, then why does the U.S. see much smaller and far away nations like Syria, Iraq, or Iran as a threat to its national security? Though the battle in Ukraine has come to a stalemate, attitudes in Europe, however, are changing. Challenges like immigration, terrorism, and other concerns have overshadowed the perceived threat from Russia, which has been seen as a major challenge to many over the past couple of years. At the same time, there is visible combat fatigue and growing pessimism over the Ukraine crisis. Uh, speak of the Ukraine crisis that has been going on for two years. Uh, do you have any idea or any sense like when will it end? Nobody knows this. Absolutely in the wrong way. Probably going to continue for decades. There are so much problems in the world. People talk about stuff and they're supposed to come to a solution, but it's not happening. None of both sides can achieve a battle victory. I would definitely say in economy how prices and certain like products are limited because I never thought that it would impact us this much. Developments like these could force politicians to rethink their military-focused strategy in terms of the Ukraine war or the relationship with Russia. Maybe it's the right time to make another attempt at diplomacy. Negotiation and talks may not always bring about a perfect solution to all the problems around the world, but they are far better than pursuing death and destruction through military means. Ultimately, all concerned parties will have to sit at the negotiation table to draw an end to the Ukraine conflict, and how we end that conflict may very well have a lasting effect on how we avert future potential conflicts.